So in my main post-debate breakdown, I talked about how excited I was about this debate. I thought it was really nice to see the candidates kind of team up to take on Mike Bloomberg, this billionaire oligarch who's trying to buy the election. Although one moment really stood out to me, and it was such a disgusting moment that it literally made me feel sick to my stomach. So Chuck Todd asked this question, and at first, you know, I was a little bit irritated that he asked this, but in the end, I'm glad he did. He asked whether or not the candidates would uh, be okay with the person who got the most delegates and votes winning the nomination, or if, you know, maybe something else happens at that convention in the event it is a contested convention. And what you're going to see here is every single candidate on that stage, with the exception of Bernie Sanders, say that they are okay undermining the will of voters, having superdelegates just select someone else. Take a look. We are at the end here. I got to let that one go. We are, we, are not, we are less than two weeks away from a national primary. And I want to ask all of you this simple question. There's a very good chance none of you are going to have enough delegates to the Democratic National Convention to clinch this nomination. Okay? If that happens, I want all of your opinions on this. Should the person with the most delegates at the end of this primary season be the nominee, even if they are short of a majority? Senator Sanders, I'm going to let you go last year because I know your view on this. <laughs> so instead, I will start with you, Mayor Bloomberg. Whatever the rules of the Democratic Party are, they should be followed. And if they have a process, which I believe okay. they do, I'm trying to do so this that yes, everybody to else, fast. everybody can, do, can... So you can, want the convention to work its will? Yes. Senator Warren. But a convention working its will means that people have the delegates that are pledged to them, and they keep those delegates until so the you come person? to the convention. No? All okay. of the people. All righty. Vice President Biden? Play by the rules. Yes or no? Leading person with the delegates, should they be the nominee or not? No. Let the process work its way out. Mayor Buttigieg? Not necessarily. Not to listen. Senator majority. Klobuchar? Let the process work. Senator Sanders? Well, the process includes 500 superdelegates on the second ballot. So I think that right. the will of the people should okay. prevail. Yes. Uh, thank you, guys. Most votes should become the nominee. Five no's and a yes. Yikes. Bernie Sanders said it simply, the person with the most votes should be the nominee. So everyone likes to claim that Bernie Sanders is polarizing. He's not a Democrat and he's a socialist, but He's the only one on that stage who is a true Democrat, small d Democrat, in that he believes in democracy. The person who gets the most votes wins. And I thought that everyone else in the Democratic Party believed that as well, because after the election, when Hillary Clinton lost, even though she won the popular vote, we heard the Democratic Party screeching at the top of their lungs about how we should abolish the Electoral College and respect the will of voters. And I agree with them. But now all of a sudden, if it might benefit them politically, they're okay using all of their delegates, pulling delegates to make sure that Bernie Sanders, if this happens, you know, with the most delegates, loses. Even if he got the most votes. Even Elizabeth Warren said that. This is absolutely morally reprehensible. And I, I just, I can't stress this enough. If this happens, if Bernie Sanders goes into that convention with a plurality of delegates and the most votes, and he does not walk out as the nominee, it's not as simple as Donald Trump winning and being reelected because that is a certainty at that point. But the Democratic Party will be destroyed. And I've talked about this before as well. This party could not possibly withstand that. They couldn't withstand that. And anyone who's openly suggesting that this should happen, or maybe, you know, they would be willing to do that, they have to admit they're okay with Donald Trump getting a second term. Because even if in D.C., in these elitist mainstream media, corporate Democrat bubbles, they would love to see the nomination be stolen from Bernie Sanders. If you honestly believe you're going to be able to win against Donald Trump after you just stole the nomination in front of all of our eyes... Not happening. You're done. I mean, they had plausible deniability in 2016 when they rigged the primary against Bernie Sanders because this wasn't necessarily something that was very obvious. Sure, people commented on the lack of debates, but nobody really saw the intricacies. Not very many people who are just regular, non-savvy political consumers saw, you know, what Donna Brazile said about the joint fundraising agreement that the DNC signed between Hillary Clinton and the DNC before she even secured the nomination. So nobody knows about that. But if you do this in the open, 
if you disrespect voters that much, you can't survive this election. So losing this election is the least of your concerns. Trying to put together the pieces of the Democratic Party after you just blow it to shreds, that's going to be your task. And I honestly don't know that the Democratic Party would be able to survive this. You'll have two generations, millennials and Zoomers, check out of politics permanently. Say, you know what, I'm done with electoral politics because if this is what happens, if I vote and my vote doesn't matter, why participate? That's what's going to happen. Like, they don't realize they will black pill two generations, perhaps Gen X as well, some boomers, I imagine, if they do this. And they do this knowing the consequences, but they believe, honestly, that Beating Bernie Sanders is a greater priority than Donald Trump because they can't be naive enough to think that they can steal the nomination away from Bernie and still beat Trump. No, they know they lose. That's that's a guarantee. That is a guarantee they lose. But if they honestly think that they're still going to have a party after this, no. If they don't think that hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people would take to the streets and protest this election theft that's brazen after this party cried about Russia for three years? I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say, right? And what's interesting is that in mainstream media, we have pundits openly not just talking about this casually and not, you know, uh, denouncing the prospect of election theft at a contested convention, but you have Dr. Jason Johnson on MSNBC say, I hope there's a contested convention. I want to see that happen. I want to see that scenario. And at this point, you might as well just admit that you want Donald Trump to get a second term. But nonetheless, this is what Dr. Jason Johnson said. I want to see a contested convention, not just because it'll be interesting to see, and I'm a political scientist, but because it'll be the one test that we actually need for Bernie Sanders. For all the noise that he's making, I want to see, because someone actually started asking him about this tonight. Mike Bloomberg talked about it, some of the questions about it, how his staff behaves how his supporters behave, how they've treated the culinary unit, how they treated the Working Families Party. I want to see Bernie Sanders and his great and wonderful revolution go into a contested convention and try and wrangle those people when he's got to get a 44-year-old superdelegate from central Illinois to go to his side. I want to see him have to sit in a room with Elizabeth Warren, who he called a liar on a national stage a couple of weeks ago, and say, hey, could you please release some of your delegates to me? That's what will prove whether or not his revolution actually works. He needs to go to a contested convention, because if he can't do that, there then the democrats should have another candidate to take that moniker and go against donald trump this is a conversation that took place on national television so they're trying to normalize people basically get their feet warm dip it in the water just a little bit so it's not shocking if they're successful at stealing the nomination from bernie sanders i promise you if you do this there will be hell to pay. So what we have to do as Bernie Sanders supporters and just supporters of democracy in general is make sure that if you want to defeat Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders gets a majority of delegates on that first round. Otherwise, we've gotten a lot of indications that superdelegates are just going to outright steal it and everyone, including Elizabeth Warren, is A-OK -okay with that. Now, according to 538's projections, there's a 41% chance that Bernie Sanders does get a majority, but we can't risk it. That isn't a high enough chance. If he doesn't get a majority, or at least close to a majority, be prepared. They may actually try to steal this from Bernie Sanders. And the only way to stop them from doing that is if on that first round, he's able to secure the nomination. But the fact that we're even really entertaining this as a possibility, it really speaks to how far we've fallen as a country and how far the Democratic Party has fallen as an institution because this is a party that literally has democracy in its name right they talk about voter suppression and how voter I voter id laws uh, they disenfranchise mostly people of color and they're right to talk about that they're right to talk about how gerrymandering helps a lot of republicans it helps them certainly but it allows individuals to redraw districts to secure their election you know for years to come and they're right but if they do this if they're that brazen to where in front of everyone, the entire country's watching, and they steal a nomination away from the candidate with the most votes, they're done. The Democratic Party will go the way of the dodo. I can promise you, they will never get my vote ever again, and I'm not the only one. And, like, you don't have to just be worried about someone like me, who's this angry Bernie bro that a lot of them would say, um, because it's just normal people who wouldn't go for that as well. Like, if it were the case 
that Joe Biden were able to get more pledged delegates than Bernie Sanders. If he won a plurality, I would be incredibly demoralized. I would be so frustrated. But I wouldn't support some type of mechanism or contested convention where they just steal it away from Joe Biden and give it to Amy Klobuchar or even give it to Bernie Sanders. Because if you believe in democracy, then you have to be as principled as you possibly can be. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's what you need for democracy. Because if you don't respect democracy and the will of the people, then it's delegitimized. And when a democracy becomes illegitimate, that democracy falls into authoritarianism. And we are already gradually devolving into an oligarchy. Voters are having less and less of a say in who gets elected because money determines who wins. Voters have basically a statistically insignificant impact on policy outcomes. According to a Princeton University study, the situation is dire. Like, I need you to understand, democracies, they don't last forever. And our democracy is hanging on by a thread. And if Democrats honestly believe that they can still survive as a party after brazenly stealing this election from Bernie Sanders, that is not going to be the case, I promise you. So shame on every single fraud on that stage who just revealed to everyone that they have authoritarian instincts. They don't actually care about democracy. They don't care about winning over voters. If they think there's some type of sleazy maneuver that they can do to steal the nomination away from Bernie Sanders in hopes that one of them can secure the nomination, if they think they're going to take on Donald Trump, they've got another thing coming. So if they truly are serious about defeating Donald Trump, don't fuck with us. Respect the will of voters. And I shouldn't honestly be having to say this. Like, I shouldn't have to tell people in the Democratic Party to respect the will of voters because democracy is literally in their name. But this is the situation where we find ourselves in. You know, the powers that be, the financial interests that control the Democratic Party and all of those puppets up on the stage, they're not going to just roll over and die. They're going to do whatever they can to win. And if that includes cheating Bernie Sanders brazenly and committing theft of an election, they're going to do that too. So we have to do what we need to to make sure Bernie Sanders gets that majority. Otherwise, we're going into this convention and we're on shaky ground, even if Bernie Sanders is able to get the most votes. And it shouldn't even be something that we have to entertain. But in this day and age, the Democratic Party and all of its politicians, including Elizabeth Warren, is so morally bankrupt that they're okay with stealing an election from um, all of us. Unbelievable. In most democracies around the world, the person who gets the most votes wins. How about we make America that kind of democracy? I think at the end of the day, most Americans get that the person who gets the most votes probably ought to win. And, and that everybody ought to have the same voting power as everybody else. Like, these are not complicated principles.